All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, as you can see, we have a plethora of city staff behind me as well as Councilman Olney. Thank you for being here today. Uh, in less than three weeks, our community will be part of history with the 2024 total solar eclipse on April 8th. For those who do not know, Watertown is squarely in what's called the path of totality. The path will start south of the border before crossing into Texas and spreading northeast. After 3 p.m., it moves over Cleveland, then Buffalo, and at approximately 3.22 p.m., the city of Watertown will experience what is known as totality and plunge into darkness for approximately three minutes and 39 seconds. This once in a lifetime occurrence and an event that according to estimates has the potential to attract over 150,000 people to our city from across, from across the globe comes with a great deal of preparation. It's interesting to note that so far we have had people from as far away as Europe, Italy, South America, across the country, register to come to this event. For roughly two years now, the city has been preparing for the total eclipse. And today we are here to urge you, our residents, to do the same. To do what you can to be ready, stay safe, and enjoy this once in a lifetime experience. As you can see again, we have many of the people who have been working very hard behind the scenes to prepare for the eclipse with us today. And in a moment, they'll each be sharing important information that you need to be aware of as April 8th approaches. I'll kick it off by turning things over to our city manager, Eric Wagonar. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the uh, city staff for the incredible, uh, incredible amount of work they've put into preparing for this once in a lifetime event. <clears throat> There have been countless hours of hard work uh, that have gone into this weekend. Uh, the primary focus of our planning efforts has been twofold, ensuring that we are doing everything we can to provide for public safety throughout the eclipse weekend and planning for an enjoyable event up on Thompson Park. We continue to coordinate with Jefferson County and New York State to ensure we have a synchronized effort when it comes to public safety. Due to the expected traffic in the city, our efforts to support the total eclipse in the park, uh, we have decided to close City Hall and other city venues uh, on 8 April. Most services provided the city will not be available that day, so please plan accordingly. This includes the city's clerk's office for licenses and permits, but they will still have online services available. The Watertown Arena ice rink will be closed on 8 April. The lobby area will remain open. The library will also be closed. Lastly, I would like to also point out that there will be no refuse pickup on the 8th. It will occur the next day. I'll uh, be followed by our, our fire chief, Matt Timmerman. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Matt Timmerman, City of Watertown Fire Chief. Uh, so I'd like to talk a little bit about some simple steps that the public can take to make sure that they're prepared for the, for the eclipse and, can, and enjoy it to the best of their ability. Uh, heavy traffic is our number one concern. So anything that you can do to avoid having to be out and about that day, uh, for example, shopping, uh, getting gas, running errands, if you can avoid doing that, we would definitely advise you to do that on previous days. Uh, no need for any panic buying. You don't need to clean the grocery stores out of bread. But do your grocery shopping early. Uh, just don't plan on being out and about on those days, on, on that day. Uh, also remember that the weather in April can be fickle, uh, can be a blizzard, can be sunny and warm, and it can also change rapidly. So if you're going to be out and about, you're probably going to be out for an extended period of time. Uh, if it's windy, uh, cold, rainy, uh, you may need to bundle up more than you would normally do so. Also, wherever you are, you might not be able to get back to your vehicle or your home. So just make sure that you are uh, properly dressed for the weather. Uh, also remember that wherever you are come eclipse time, midday is probably where you are going to remain uh, for an extended period of time. So just plan accordingly. Make sure that you are where you want to be, whether that's at home, whether that's uh, at our viewing event in the park, or anywhere else. Just make sure that you are where you want to be in time and be patient. Uh, there's going to be a lot of traffic and uh, just take time and plan for that. Uh, finally, as far as fire department preparations, uh, we'll have extra staffing on duty that day 
Uh, again, our primary concern is traffic, so we'll have our on-duty personnel spread out across the city. We'll have our on-duty personnel spread out across the city to uh, ensure that we are able to respond to emergencies in a timely fashion. And that's it. I'm followed by uh, Watertown Police Department Chief Donning. Nice Thanks, Chief. We're all kind of excited about this eclipse, and uh, there's going to be a lot of people in Watertown and greater Watertown area and throughout the county. And obviously, traffic, as has been mentioned already, is going to be a great concern. Uh, we want to make sure everyone thinks about the increased risk with the pedestrian traffic that we're going to be having around Thompson Park and the surrounding neighborhoods and probably uh, the whole southeastern quarter of the city. Uh, we urge motorists and pedestrians to exercise heightened caution when navigating the streets surrounding Thompson Park. Whether you're driving, walking, cycling, please remain attentive to your surroundings, obey traffic signals and signs, prioritize the safety of yourself and others. We recommend that all drivers reduce their speed and stay alert follow all traffic laws, avoid distractions such as uh, primarily the cell phones, plan ahead, uh, give yourself a lot of extra time, and be patient and courteous. Uh, patience is probably going to be the word of the day uh, because we're expecting a lot of traffic. This is an event the size that uh, we're not used to dealing with and to my knowledge we've never dealt with anything uh, this large before. So. We're not real sure what to expect, but we are pretty sure from listening to folks uh, that have been to these total solar eclipses around the country uh, that we're not going to believe what we're going to see. So uh, patience again. Uh, I'd also like to remind everyone that there are no firearms uh, in Thompson Park, so we don't want to see people bringing weapons up there. In short, we want everyone to be safe and enjoy the event, but it will take common sense and some patience and I'm thinking a lot of patience on everyone's part to make that happen. So thank you. Uh, and next up is uh, Jeff Erda from Planner's Office. Thank you, Chief. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about transportation on the day of the eclipse and road closures. Uh, as you heard from both Chief Timmerman and Chief Donahue, uh, we're expecting a lot of traffic that day. We're expecting a lot of people coming into the city. The population of Watertown could double or triple or more that day. Uh, and obviously we have a signature event planned that after myself you'll hear from Superintendent Weller about. Uh, as far as getting to that event, that's the main thing I'm going to talk about. Um, We're going to be running a continuous bus loop all day, uh, which is on the map here. And there will be three stops, one at Gotham and Thompson, one at Franklin and Thompson, and then a third stop at Park Circle, as well as a stop in the park. To facilitate these buses moving throughout the day, we are closing Thompson Boulevard for its entire stretch from Washington Street to State Street. That'll be effective at 6 a.m. And we'll also be closing Gotham Street along the south edge of the park. Uh, this will allow buses to move safely and efficiently through that area, and it will also give us pedestrian stacking capacity at both stop A along Thompson and stop C along Park Drive. Uh, I want to emphasize there will be no public parking in Thompson Park uh, without any exception. Um, this is not only due to the volume of traffic we expect, but just the condition of the grass in the park in April. Uh, there will be limited bike racks in the park, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but if you are attending Total Eclipse of the Park, there are two ways into the park, on a bus or on foot. And if you're arriving on a bus, you will have to board at one of the three stops, stop A, B, or C. And if you're arriving on foot, you'll need to use Tower Entrance Drive, which is directly across from Franklin Street at stop B. This will be a pedestrian-only entrance and exit from the park. And finally, if you arrive on a bike, you will have to dismount when you get into the park. Um, this is because of how many pedestrians, people on foot, we expect in the park that day. It just won't be safe to actually be riding through that kind of a crowd. So we'd ask that you dismount once you get to Tower Entrance Drive, and then the same thing will go when you're leaving. Please just walk your bike down the hill and then ride away once you get to the street. Um, as far as parking goes, um, 
Obviously, if the, so the number of people in the city will triple, the demand for parking will greatly exceed the supply, and we just ask that people be patient with that. Plan to utilize parking wherever you can in the city, whether that's on street parking uh, or in any of our downtown parking lots and walk. It's about a 20 minute walk from downtown Public Square to the park, at least to the bottom. Um, and then any cross street with Thompson Boulevard um, will be closed one block away to avoid dead ending at Thompson. Um, city bus will run that day as long as traffic conditions permit. Um, but once the city starts to become exceedingly gridlocked, you know, city bus will be at the mercy of, the, of those traffic conditions. And you know, the last thing I'll just say, um, whether you're going to Thompson Park or the fairgrounds uh, or wherever you're going to be that day, traffic will be unpredictable. Uh, and it's, it's very possible that walking will actually be the fastest way of getting from point A to point B. Um, so anybody that is able-bodied and able to walk, we strongly, strongly encourage you to choose walking as your your way to get around Watertown that day. Um, and as far as our signature event, uh, Superintendent of Parks and Recreation, Scott Weller, will follow me and tell you what we've got planned. Thank you, Jeff. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to cover the event itself. Uh, the event's going to begin at 11 a.m. and going to conclude at 6 p.m. The primary activities are going to be located at the top of the hill around the monument and Tower Square. Um, the event stage is going to be located at the top of the hill facing outward or down the hill, uh, which is the primary viewing area for the day. Uh, the stage itself is going to feature a number of local radio stations to include Stevens Media Group, Community Broadcasters, Tunes 92.5. Uh, we're also going to have the Fort Drum Band there and special guest MC Brian Ashley. He's going to be counting us down to totality and uh, uh, covering the main portion of the event there. Uh, once he's done, the Fort Drum Band's gonna come back on and then we'll have a collaborative of the radio stations to finish out the day. Um, vendors, we're seeing an uptick in the interest in vendors um, to include food, children's activities, information, products, tables. Uh, there will be bounce houses there, so there'll be plenty of things for people to do. I expect the interest will continue as we get uh, closer to the event. Um, when it comes to food, as I mentioned, there are uh, going to be a number of food vendors, but I want to mention that outside food is welcome and encouraged for this event. Um, Thompson Park has a carry-in, carry-out policy, but just as with Concert in the Park, that's not going to be in effect for the day. There'll be a number of trash receptacles available. In addition to those different activities, there's going to be some telescopes available that are going to uh, provide enhanced viewing and will be displayed on larger screens for uh, people to view. And I'd also like to mention that Zoo New York will be open for the day. Uh, they're going to be open from 10 to 5.30. Glasses, very important. Um, We're going to have a limited supply of glasses. Currently the city has just under 10,000 pair. They're going to be available on a first come, first serve basis. So when you enter the venue, uh, head to the vendor area, and that's where you'll find uh, a couple different tables that will have these glasses available. A couple other things to mention, there'll be warming tents. There's gonna be one on the hill and one off in the flagpole lot. Uh, to provide an area just to get out of weather or wind or whatnot for the day. Drones, uh, no personal drones for the day. Um, again, no drones. And lastly, I would like to mention, this is uh, a ticketed event. While it's not mandatory that you get a ticket, we're asking everybody to get a ticket um, to help us prepare for the number of people that may be there. Um, and where you can do that is you go to watertownnewyorkeclipse.com that's New York spelled out, watertownnewyorkeclipse.com. Right on the home page, there's a link. Click on that, and uh, that'll lead you right there. It takes just a minute or two, so we ask that you fill that out and help us prepare. Um, at this time, I'm going to turn it back over to Mayor Campo Pierce. Alrighty, thank you, Scott. Uh, given the number of people who are expected to visit our area, the April 8th eclipse presents a tremendous opportunity for local businesses that also could come with a host of challenges. 
One of our Eclipse Committee members, Ann Richter Ashley, has visited nearly 200 businesses throughout the city to make them aware of what to expect. And she's unable to be with us today, but did share with me some key points that she's been conveying to those businesses and organizations uh, who we uh, have been able to touch base with and we'd like to relay that information today so the businesses that we have not been able to visit yet will be in the know as well. So the main message is to be aware, be prepared, and if you're a business that would cater to visitors, please be open. Uh, think about whether you will need extra food or beverages and staff if you're a business that uh, sells food and drink. And on the note of staff, be sure to educate those who work for you about what is going on so they can answer questions from visitors and customers. You may also want to consider Eclipse specials or family-friendly events surrounding the Eclipse. And if you will be open on a day that you are normally closed, please change your Google status so people will have accurate information. And it's best to do that uh, in advance so that takes effect on Google. And when they search for you, they'll see that your business is open on that day. If you're a business that has delivery scheduled for April 8th, you may want to consider moving them to another day because as you just heard, we're gonna have a significant up uptick in traffic in the city. And if you are a business that would not be catering to Eclipse goers, you may want to consider closing for the day, reducing your hours, or encouraging employees to work from home. The goal is to make the Eclipse a shared positive experience so people will want to return to the area. It will be a team effort, and we thank our local businesses for being part of that. In closing, I would like to thank members of the media for their work to spread the word about the eclipse and what people can expect. I would also like to thank members of city staff as well as those involved in our eclipse committee, our members of city council who are here today, Councilman Olney and Councilwoman Ruggiero. Uh, just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody's hard work, literally years of hard work to prepare for this momentous occasion. To members of the public, as you've heard, Today, the city of Watertown is ready for the April 8th eclipse. We are prepared to make a fun, safe, and memorable experience for residents and visitors alike. Please do your part and take steps to make sure you and your family members are ready as well. Thank you, and with that, we will take any questions that the media might have, if there are any. <laughs> Izzy? Um, obviously, April 8th is the big day, but when is the city preparing for the influx of traffic Take this one. Well, one of the things, uh, indicators that we have is that most of the hotels and uh, rentals mm -hmm. and bed and breakfast have been booked up for months now. So we would expect seeing people coming in starting that Thursday and Friday. So we expect this to be a full weekend of activity with a, with a significant amount of population. Any other questions from the media? Um, Self-service, I know we've kind of talked about it, but um, obviously with big events, people are concerned about the lack of self-service or slower self-service. Is that something that the city is also addressing? I can speak to that. Or Go ahead. Yeah. Sure. So that's something that has been on our radar and I know is on the radar of self-service providers. Uh, they are aware of the uptick in visitors that we're going to see in the uh, concentration of people in certain areas that could put a strain on cell service. I would just advise that people prepare for possibly less signal strength, um, but it's something that I know Verizon, AT&T, they are aware of the they are aware of the situation and doing what they can to boost service so we don't have those interruptions. I don't know if anybody else has yeah. additional information. Thank you, Mayor. I can just add to that, because of the, the mass of uh, the crowd up at the up in the park, we do have a, a cell phone on wheels at uh, Tower that will be put up on the park to help with the bandwidth up there. So. Can you explain that more? So it's a, it, yeah, it's a portable <laughs> cell phone tower, basically. That's, a, you know, they call it a cow, it's a cell phone on wheels. Uh, and then uh, I can't remember which which uh, outlet's going to do that for us, but we're going to have it. We're going to have it up on top of the park, so it should increase the uh, you know, cell phone capability. I have my Verizon. Okay, Verizon. So yeah. I have a question on well, parking. Well, I know that we had parking before, um, but it looks like now it's just on street parking. Are there any designated parking areas? 
Sure. So uh, as I mentioned during my remarks earlier, um, we anticipate that the demand for parking is going to outstrip supply. Uh, there's just really nothing we can do about that. We're a, a city of a population of about 23 or 24,000. And just for some context, that's only about the third the size of an average NFL stadium. Um, so we really just don't have the off-street parking infrastructure to accommodate that kind of demand. Um, as far as in the park goes, the, the area usually used for the concert in the park in July uh, is really not practical due to on April 8th the potential for snow, rain, mud, etc. So we're really just relying on available parking through the city. All on-street parking in the city is public parking. Um, we have a number of public parking lots downtown um, with in the neighborhood of 15 or 1600 spaces available that are about a 20 minute walk from the park. Um, but really our, our capacity for parking is limited um, and it's not like we can create more for, for one day. So we just encourage people, you know, arrive early if you need to park, you know, try to get into the city earlier if you're coming from outside the city to find parking. And if you live in the city and you're going to this event, um, please walk if you are able. The best way to really reduce the demand for parking uh, is to have people arriving on other modes. I mean, I, I know that um, from conversations that, as I mentioned, and Richter Ashley's been working the business angle. I know that she's talked with a number of businesses that um, may be shortening their hours for the day, but as far as bigger businesses, I think that some are making plans, uh, you know, if they're going to be getting shipments, they're having them come earlier in the week, that kind of thing, just to plan ahead for the influx of traffic that's going to be occurring. The road closure draft map there, the draft, I'm assuming it probably just adds that there's going to be another map that will be made, but I didn't know if that also meant that there might be some changes to the <coughs> I can take that. Um, As of right now, uh, this is our plan. Um, I think more accurate than draft would be to say current through today, 321. Uh, I don't anticipate any changes in the roads that we're going to close. Um, this is what we deemed necessary. Uh, mainly for safety and efficiency of getting people into and out of Thompson Park. Um, you know, everything, uh, safety is number one, everything comes below safety, and then efficiency in getting people in and out of the park is after that. I really don't anticipate any changes. What kind of help do you think the state provided? Safety and other markets. <clears throat> Um, uh, right now, uh, we have limited support from the state. We've asked, asked for some help from them. Uh, we, as many of you know, I put a request in for some National Guard support early on, and uh, that was denied. But the, the good news is, based on our planning process, we've mitigated any, any of those risks. And, uh, and we have another meeting coming up with the state tomorrow and the county tomorrow, and then a follow-on meeting next week as we get closer to the event. So I think we're in a good spot right now. With, uh, with, I know this, we are getting some additional state troopers uh, up here to help us out with law enforcement and traffic control. Uh, that's probably the predominant amount of this uh, state support we're going to get is uh, from, the, from the New York State Police at this point in time. Do you have any idea how many more? Uh, it's a numbers in flux based on where how things are developing throughout the entire uh, path of totality throughout the state. As many of you might know, this is a, impacts about 22 counties, and so. That number, uh, everybody's going through the same adjustments to the population projections as we are. So that, that, uh, that number, it, fl it fluctuates as we, as we continue to plan. What about um, support from the county? From where? The county. Uh, well, we, got, we have great coordination with the county. The, our police chief has been in, co in direct coordination with the sheriff uh, department. And uh, there, it's a team effort. We're going to have a team effort up on the, on the hill. So we'll have law enforcement from the county sheriff's department uh, and the state uh, police and our own folks up there. Uh, they're working on and engaging the volunteer fire departments outside of the city as well and helping them with their readiness status. So I think it's a good team effort and uh, we're looking at all aspects of public safety to include county resources. Is Fort Roanoke in any 
Uh, they are in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, some smaller efforts. We're getting some uh, small vehicles from them. I believe, Keith, you want to address that? <clears throat> Yeah, of course, as you know, Fort Drum Fire Department is always a, uh, uh, a willing partner in uh, public safety here in the city of Watertown. So we've reached out for support for them. <clears throat> I'm sure we'll be hearing back from them shortly. Um, so they have some uh, specific um, materials and equipment that we might be, uh, might be able to use that day. Any other questions? Okay, if not, I will just uh, remind the public, as Mr. Weller said, we have a City of Watertown Eclipse website set up. That's www.watertownnewyork, and New York is spelled out, eclipse.com. That is the best place to get information on the Eclipse and any updates. I'll also mention our Facebook page uh, for our event, and that's Total Eclipse of the Park. So uh, please, Stay tuned for more information and stay in the know, and we count down to April 8th. Thank you, everybody.